Okay, so welcome to this video on Laplace's rule of succession. Laplace's rule of succession. And Laplace is the problem that Laplace was considering uh, when he, which gives rise to the Laplace's rule of succession, is uh, he was considering uh, this problem. He wanted to know uh, if we are given, we are given some information, we are given some information, and the specific information he had, uh, he had and wanted to um, analyse was that the sun has risen uh, for the past, uh, let's say, big N days. So, uh, we want to know what is the probability that the sun will actually rise on a day. Uh, so, the past wanted to know what is the probability, uh, well, well, he wanted to know what is the probability density function, rather. What's the probability density function for uh, the values of the probability? Uh, so, basically, Laplace said, uh, we don't know. We don't know what the probability that the sun will rise on any day is. Forget your knowledge of physics. Uh, we don't know the probability that the sun will rise will rise on any day. And we want to ask, what is the probability density function of, um, of the probability? Of, of, what is, we want to basically know. Uh, the probability, P we know, is an element of the interval 0 to 1. So what we want to know is, I want you to tell me what is the probability density function that P is each one of these values. So I want to know what is uh, the probability uh, What's the probability density function that P will equal uh, any of the values between 0 and 1? That's what Laplace was trying to work out. Okay, so if we think about what our sample space is, and another question actually, I just want to say, he wanted to know what's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow uh, given that it has risen for the past n big n days. Okay, uh, so uh, if we think about our great big probability space, what are all the prob possibilities that could happen? Well, the first thing is that uh, the va the prob we don't know what the probability uh, that the sun will rise on any specific day is yet. So, firstly, we can split this probability space up into every possible value that P can take. So, let's say this is the probability that P is, well, P is equal to 0 up here, and then we have, all the way down here, we have P is equal to 1. So, basically, these are events that are going to split up uh, split up the, sa uh, the uh, sample space up into a partition, basically. And these are all the different values of P. So, somewhere in the middle, we'll have P is equal to 0 0.5. So, for each, each value that P takes, there are loads of possible outcomes of what could happen. Okay, uh, we have also uh, we're also observing the de observing the um, observing the sun for uh, let's say n plus one days because we're going to need to observe it for that many uh, days in order to answer our second question of what's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow. Okay, so uh, basically, if you imagine letting let if you imagine looking at one of these individual events, so now let's let's just look at a subset of this. So we're going to look at the subset uh, for, uh, let's have a look at this subset here. So uh, we're going to say, okay, the probability is now fixed, and we're just looking at a subset of here. So in that subset, so this is this subset, uh, so this is the, all the subset of events where the probability is fixed at some value now, and we're going to look at every possible outcome that could happen in uh, that event. So uh, in that event, there is the outcome that the sun could rise, 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 then it might not rise, sun could rise, sun could rise, all the way up to uh, we need m plus one of them. So I need you to tell me all the possibilities that could happen over m plus one days. So for each of these, there are how many options? Well, on each day, it can either rise or it cannot rise. So there are two to the m plus one possible outcomes. And for every single probabi probability value in this sample space, each of those will have as a set every possible outcome here. Uh, so uh, even in the probability is equal to zero, there will be, you know, we will have each possible outcome. Uh, but um, 
obviously when we uh, come to work out the probability of those other outcomes, it won't they won't matter. But those are all possible outcomes of this experiment. So this sample space basically is varying in two ways. Firstly, it's varying over the fact that you can take that the probability that the sun rises on any one day uh, can vary between zero and one. And secondly, in if you fix the probability and you just look at a certain event, so this is the event uh, that uh, the probability that the sun will rise on a certain day, which I can't be bothered to write, that p is equal to some constant. So we'll say little p is the probability that the sun will rise on a certain day, on an individual day. Uh, so if p is equal to some little constant, that's an event, that's a subset of this sample space. And in that set, uh, there are every possible outcome, i.e. the sun could rise, the sun could rise uh, over n plus 1 days. All the possible outcomes are in that event. And you have that for every single possible value of p. That is your sample space that we have at the moment. So, uh, the first thing in the class did is said, OK, we can then set up a random variable. Though, So let's say this is random variable. Uh, what random variable should we call it? Should we call it big A? And big A is going to map any outcome, so any element of this sample space, it's going to map it onto the value of P. So uh, if um, S is an outcome, it has an ascribed value of P. So it's in one of these one of these events which is partitioning up the entire sample space. So it has an ascribed P value. So any outcome, uh, so this, this probability space, uh, the, if you want another way of viewing this sample space, uh, it consists of every possible 2 to the n plus 1 possible uh, combinations of the sun rises and the sun doesn't rise and to each one of these it also ascribes a possible value of p which is an element of 0 1 so in actual fact every outcome in this in this um, sample space consists of a combination of the sun rising and the sun not rising plus uh, the piece of information about what the probability is. And all of those are sitting in a sample space together. So if I just rigorize that, it's uh, the set of, um, oh, how am I going to do this? Sun, sun, not sun, 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 sun. Uh, all possible 2 to the n possible, uh, 2 to the big n plus 1 possible combinations of those. Um, and then it's any p-value uh, where p can be an element of 0 to 1. So if you put all of those possible things in a set together, that's our sample space at the moment. So it is a complicated sample space. It's a sample space like no sample space we've ever seen before, but it is a sample space. OK, and now we have this random variable A, which is ascribing to each outcome. So each outcome has one of these, so it has a combination, and it has a P. And I'm saying I don't give a damn what this combination is. Just ascribe it the value P. So it is just mapping any outcome onto what uh, its probability value was, so uh, what the pro probability that the sun rose each day was. Okay, uh, so that's one random variable, and we're going to say that uh, the um, A is, this random variable A is uniformly distributed over the interval 0 to 1. So basically, uh, the PDF is uniform, and it's actually equal to uh, 1, equal to a constant 1, so F of uh, big A of X is equal to just 1. Okay, so that's the PDF. So basically, this is saying that each probability, each little p, is uniformly likely. Each one is reasonably likely. Which, obviously, knowing your... Um Knowing, your, um, knowing our physics, we would uh, say, well, that's not true. Uh, but just model it like that. Uh, imagine you are the first human and you don't know anything about physics. And you just want to, you know, work out, since you've observed that the sun has risen uh, for n days, uh, what's, we want to work out, basically, what is the most likely probability. Can we discern from the fact that we've seen the sun rise for the past n days what the likely probability is? Uh, that the sun is going to rise on each day is. So we're trying to work out this actual parameter, basically, which is something that we've never tried to do before. Uh, we've always focused on uh, the probability being constant before. We haven't... Uh, what we're actually asking is, basically, given some experimental evidence, we'd like to work out what a parameter like P is. And that's obviously a very, very important question for physics, even if this uh, question is a bit uh, iffy. A bit sort of, you know, why are we asking this? Uh, but in other aspects of physics and um, in aspects of statistics, this is going to be really important because we will, we do want to know what is the probability that an individual event has happened will happen, uh, given that we 
have the information, given that the information we've collected, the experimental evidence we've collected, is that the sun has risen for the past n days. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, uh, so um, so uh, we've got that the uh, this random variable a is distributed uniformly uh, with uh, pro uh, on the interval zero to one. Now, what I want to do is create another event in here. Uh, so I need a big blue pen. Okay, so let's define a new event in this set here. So this event blue, this blue event here, this blue rectangle is going to be the event. So blue rectangle here is the event uh, that um, is equal to the event uh, that uh, the first, the first, uh, the first n trials are all sun. So basically, the sun does come up. So this is the event. This is all possible outcomes. Uh, this event consists of the set of all possible outcomes where you have sun, 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 uh, n times. And then I don't care what you have on the n plus one one. You can have sun or you can have not sun, but I don't care. So I'll just put a little, uh, put whatever you want there. And then uh, as oh, I should put, and then as your other thing, I don't care what's there either. I don't care what your probability is there. So this can take on uh, s or it can take on n, and this can take on any p uh, between zero or one. So that's the event that has happened. The event that has happened is that the sun has risen for n days. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, um, and we don't know what the probability is. So that is an event. That's the event that we have observed to happen. So I might write observed event. And now what we want to know, uh, let's call this event some name. So I might call this event, um, uh, could I use the letter E? We haven't used E yet, so I'll just call this event E. Okay, uh, so event E. We would like to know what is the, well, I can't say the probability um, because the probability of it being of being what I want to know intuitively. I'm going to write it anyway, even though it's not right. Uh, I want to know what is the probability that the little parameter p is equal to some constant, given that event E has happened. So given that event E has happened, given that we have seen the sun rise for the past big n days, what is the probability that the parameter P, i.e. this probability that the sun rises on each day, is actually equal to a constant K? Now the problem is that that is equal to zero because K is a continuous random variable. So you cannot ask this. This is the wrong question to ask uh, because the actual probability of it being any specific real number between 0 and 1 is equal to 0. So instead what we want to ask is what um, we're going to have to modify our question. So instead we're going to ask what is the probability that little p is less than or equal to k uh, given that e has happened. I .e. We're going to find the CDF value. Uh, we could denote this big F of k and then what we could work out is we could work out the PDF from big F of k. And the PDF is kind of the continuous analog analogy of the PMF. So uh, the better question to ask is what is the PDF? What is uh, the, what we really want to know is what is the PDF of little k? What is the probability density of little k having happened? And the way that we work that out is first computing the CDF and then taking the derivative. So we can ask what is the probability uh, of the events that P is less than or equal to K, uh, given that the event E has happened. And then from that, we can hopefully get the PDF. OK, so I don't really want to lose my drawing. I want that to be nice and visible. So we'll get another piece of paper over here. OK, uh, so we now apply Bayes' rule. And I'm going to remind you of what Bayes' rule is, because it's uh, a long, long time ago since I discussed that in the uh, playlist. Uh, so Bayes' rule is basically connecting the probability that of the event A happening given that event B has, happening, has happened with the probability that B has happened given that A happens. Okay, so by the definitions of conditional probability, we know that the probability that A happens given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. And we also know that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of uh, B intersection A, but that's the same as the probability of A intersection B because they're the same event, divided by the probability of A. So we therefore get from this that the probability of A intersection B 
is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So, sticking this in here, we get that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A divided by the probability of B times the probability of B given A. Okay, and this is called uh, Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule. Okay, and there's a whole field of statistics known as Bayesian statistics based on that rule. Okay, the whole army of people living their lives based on this rule. Okay, uh, so, um, right, so, um, this is the rule here, Bayes' rule. Uh, so, we want the probability of the event that little p, this parameter, is less than or equal to k given e. Well, that is equal to, just applying Bayes' rule, the probability of the event that little p is less than or equal to k times the probability of event e happening given that little p is less than or equal to k divided by the probability of event b happening, so event e happening, the probability that event e happens. Okay, so wow, that's what we need to work out though. So we need to work out each of these parts of Bayes' rule. Well, firstly, the probability that of the event that little p is less than or equal to k happening is very, very easy uh, because uh, we know uh, that uh, the random variable a uh, was mapping the outcome s onto uh, its value p, and we know by assumption we assumed that a was uniformly distributed, a was uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 1. So that means that the CDF uh, of, um, of a, of some little value x, is actually equal to x uh, because it's uniformly distributed, uh, which means that the probability that uh, big A is less than or equal to some little x is equal to x. So the probability that p is less than or equal to k is actually equal to the probability that big A is less than or equal to k. Uh, so that's equal to k. Just, just basically we're using different parameters here. I should have called that random variable here a. Uh, I should have instead called that p maybe rather than k. Uh, I'm swapping notation all over the place and so I hope it's still clear what I mean here. Uh, so basically I'm saying that the probability that uh, the parameter p is less than or equal to k is equal to k uh, because I am assuming each p is equally likely. Uh, so um, the uh, CDF function will grow like this, so 0 uh, to 1, and uh, if here's k, uh, it's going to, the probability that you're going to be less than or equal to k is just going to be how big k is in the interval 0 to 1. So k is some element in the interval 0 to 1, and depending on how big it is, it, that uh, determines how much of the uh, probability of the whole space it takes up. So the bigger k is, the, the closer it is to 1. Uh, I mean, if it's equal to 1, then you're asking what is the probability of the event that little p is less than or equal to 1? Well, that's the entire space. Uh, so um, th it's pretty believable that that is the case if you assume that each, uh, each, um, each, little, each value of, uh, each value, potential value for p between 0 and 1 is equally likely. So that's the first bit. We can work out that. Uh, so uh, that's um, this bit done here. Now we'd like to know what is the probability of event ha E happening given that P is less than or equal to K. Okay, right. Well, that's a bit more difficult to work out, but it's still doable uh, because event E, remember, is the probability is the event that the sun rose n times. We are now saying that we are in a space where P is less than or equal to K and we're saying that the sun rose n times. Uh, so, we, what we want uh, is we, we can do this via the law of total probability, basically. Uh, we can say that this is equal to the probability that E... Um, well, uh, we're going to split it up into the law of total probability, and I think it's time for a break for me.